Hello everybody, this is Hollywood Joe from Hollywood's World of Sports coming to you tonight to talk to you about uh, one very important pay-per-view that kind of takes place in the middle of each year for WWE and it is the Money in the Bank pay-per-view and this past week both Money in the Bank ladder matches were announced along with their participants in each one and I'd like to start off by talking about the Raw Money in the Bank, otherwise known as the WWE uh, title Money in the Bank match. Uh, this match is being dubbed as the Money in the Bank All-Stars. And when you look at the list of names on this uh, match, you can understand why. Uh, they include CM Punk, Rob Van Dam, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, Christian, Randy Orton, and Kane. Now, you know how the internet wrestling community likes to buzz and put out reports and uh, assume that they think they know everything that's going on. Uh, because a lot of people are already saying that Daniel Bryan is going to win this match. Even me, to a certain extent, thinks that Daniel Bryan is going to win this match because of how much of a role he's on and how he is being presented on WWE television. But if you really look at this match, you really, you really can't predict a winner. I mean, because every person in this match you know, has a legitimate leg to stand on. A legitimate two legs to stand on, if you think about it. Because all of them have been World Heavyweight or WWE Champion. All of them have been in Money in the Bank ladder matches. All of them are main event competitors. Now, if Mark Henry wins the WWE title, which... Um, I'll just be blunt about it. I find it very unlikely that he will, but let's say WWE decides to swerve everybody and Mark Henry wins the WWE title from John Cena. I could see whoever um, beating or whoever would face Mark Henry facing him at SummerSlam or you know cashing it in at SummerSlam against him. However, my strong belief is that John Cena will win the WWE Championship and I believe whoever wins the you know WWE title Money in the Bank ladder match will I think eventually turn heel to cash in that briefcase against Cena. It only makes sense because there's seven faces in the match. Seven good guys for all you people that don't know wrestling lingo. But um, it's kind of weird because the All-Stars match is all good guys and the World Heavyweight title uh, ladder match, uh, Money in the Bank ladder match is all heels. Bad guys. Again, for you, those who don't know your wrestling language, but it's really weird because I've never ever seen two matches on a pay-per-view where one's full of all good guys and one's full of all bad guys. It's kind of unheard of. Uh, it's really hard to predict the All-Stars because like I said, it's in Philadelphia, former home of ECW, so you have Rob Van Dam returning. I mean, that's a huge, huge thing. Uh, CM Punk is very, very well respected in Philadelphia as is Daniel Bryan due to their Ring of Honor um, histories because Ring of Honor was based out of Pennsylvania as well but I mean like I said you really can't count out Orton or Sheamus uh, you know I think Kane and Christian are just kind of there um, Orton and Sheamus so uh, for the longest time have been rumored to be turning heel and so that could be the thing that turns them heel is cashing in on uh, John Cena after he's had a brutal match. Um, the only other 
possibility I could see with a you know a good guy going against Cena is if uh, the winner of the Money in the Bank ladder match for the WWE title pulls like a Rob Van Dam and like announces ahead of time that he's you know cashing in the briefcase. That's the only other explanation I can see, and you know Rob Van Dam did do that, and he did it at ECW One Night Stand in 2006. Uh, when he faced John Cena, and John Cena pretty much uh, went into uh, very, very much hostile territory. So, I would be really curious, and I'm really excited for this match, because it is stacked. It is probably going to be one of the greatest ladder matches of all time. I mean, when you have that much talent, and that much personality and ego... In one match, it's bound to be a great match. So, uh, the Money in the Bank All Stars, that's a hard one for me to predict, but I would say the front runners are definitely uh, Rob Van Dam and Daniel Bryan for me. Uh, CM Punk, I'm just going to put it out there, and I kind of, you know, was telling somebody just a couple weeks ago that I think they're going to do with CM Punk with what they did with John Cena last year, have them just you know, fight off all these roadblocks and obstacles and then go on to win um, the WWE title at WrestleMania the following year. And it kind of started with CM Punk this year when he lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 29. And I really, truly believe that you won't see CM Punk uh, win the WWE title until WrestleMania 30. So uh, that's just my bold prediction. Uh, CM Punk obviously is a big feud with Brock Lesnar coming up so I'm kind of excusing CM Punk from the equation on that but I, you never know though I mean WWE has a funny way of doing things so but like I said Rob Van Dam and Daniel Bryan are the two I would watch out for very very much so that would be the Money in the Bank All-Stars. Now, the real, real interesting one. The one that has me just guessing up and down and all around and all over the place. The World Heavyweight Title Money in the Bank Ladder Match. Featuring Wade Barrett, Antonio Cesaro, Jack Swagger, Damian Sandow, Cody Rhodes, Dean Ambrose, and I really can't believe I'm saying this, but Fandango. And uh, the first thing I'm going to say, and the internet community might hate me for it, but Fandango does not have a bloody chance in hell of even coming close to winning that briefcase. I think he's just in there for, excuse my language, but shits and giggles. I could never, ever take Fandango seriously as a main event, world heavyweight title contender, or if champion. Just not believable enough. So we're not even going to talk about him. Wade Barrett, has deserved a World Heavyweight Championship for probably two to three years now. Antonio Cesaro is one of the most talented wrestlers on the roster and is very, very underutilized and very, very underrated. Jack Swagger has been there and done that, but I could see if Alberto Del Rio retains the World Heavyweight title, I honestly could see Jack Swagger turning face because now you have Alberto Del Rio trashing America and being all about Mexico and everything else under the sun. So I could, I could see that possibility. But a lot of people, and I mean the internet community, internet wrestling community, a lot of people believe that Dean Ambrose is already a world heavyweight title um, championship material type guy. 
Um, Dean Ambrose is compared to a lot like Roddy Roddy Piper was in his uh, personality and his mic skills. Um, that's a nice, that's a very nice comparison. It's a very, very nice comparison to have. Uh, but no offense to Dean Ambrose fans, but he's got a long, long way before he gets to Roddy Roddy Piper's level. So, uh, but I do believe Dean Ambrose could be world heavyweight champion right now. I believe, you know, any of the three members of the shield could be WWE or world heavyweight champion. And I think at some point in their careers, they will be once they all break off from what they're doing. Uh, Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes. Um, Cody was really on fire for a long time uh, when he was with Legacy and teaming with Ted DiBiase and when he was doing the whole, um, you know, dashing Cody Rhodes, uh, wearing the mask, being the Intercontinental Champion. He was on fire for the longest time, but once he lost an Intercontinental title, um, the second time, to Christian, I believe it was, it just, nothing has really gone right for Cody Rhodes, in my opinion. Uh, team Rhodes Scholars, I honestly think it's actually a cool tag team. But they're, again, they're very underrated and underutilized. Uh, I could see Damian Sandow possibly winning it. Um, because he's a killer Kowalski guy and, you know, Triple H favors, uh, Kowalski guys because Triple H was trained by killer Kowalski. So I, it wouldn't surprise me, uh, it wouldn't surprise me at the least bit of Sandow did win it, but, um, I don't think a lot of other people think he's ready for it yet. But the two, the two guys I'm really looking for in the World Heavyweight Title, uh, you know, Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, the two ones I'll be looking out for are Wade Barrett and Dean Ambrose. Uh, Wade, like I said, Wade, Wade has deserved a World Heavyweight Championship for a long time. He's got he's got great ring presence. Uh, you know, I, I like the I like the bare knuckle brawler thing. The, you know, he's he's got he's got the entire package, and it would be really cool to see. Uh, you know, the English win the world title because you know guys like the British Bulldog and William Regal uh, never had the chance to be world heavyweight champion. Although um, a lot of people think both of them could have been very easily with how great they were in the ring. But Dean Ambrose, I could see, the other thing I could see is Dean Ambrose becoming world heavyweight champion, and that would be the thing that breaks up the shield. Um, that's Those are two scenarios. And then again, like I said, if Del Rio uh, retains the title, like I said, I could see the scenario where Swagger breaks away from Coulter and turns face to defend America and feud with um, Del Rio over it. But if if Ziggler retains, which I ain't going to lie, I hope uh, as a fan that he does because he worked really hard to get to where he's at. And uh, if Ziggler gets back the title, I could see a very, very, very good feud between Wade Barrett and Dolph Ziggler in the near future, or again, um, Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose. That would be uncharted territory. That'd be a great feud to have. So, uh, though, like I said, the World Heavyweight title match, um, I think has a lot more importance right now than the WWE title match because, it, you know, WWE title, it's John Cena, Super Cena, um, I don't foresee him losing it, like I said. But like I said, the, the the two most important matches, you know, that will impact the rest of the year are definitely uh, the two ladder matches that take place every year. And uh, 
you know, to this day, only one man hasn't been able to cash in the briefcase successfully, and still, it's obviously John Cena, which I thought was a wasted, uh, wasted use of a Money in the Bank briefcase last year. But that's just one man's opinion. Uh, everybody else, it's either, you know, helped, you know, get them a bigger run or help them really break out. I mean, CM Punk did it twice. Edge did it twice. Both of them got a lot bigger and became legendary because of it. Uh, it resurrected Kane's career. Um, when Kane won it, Kane had a lengthy world title reign, uh, which he deserved for a very, very long time. Uh, Daniel Bryan, obviously, uh, that kind of put Daniel Bryan on the map. Even though um, his initial world title run was ended in 18 seconds, but uh, Daniel Bryan became a great bad guy over it and showed that he could be just as good as a bad guy as he could as a good guy. And uh, Rob Van Dam made history with it, uh, becoming the first person to ever hold the... Uh, WWE and ECW titles simultaneously. So yes, the Money in the Bank ladder match does do wonders for certain people. Um, it, either real, it either makes a good superstar and helps them become a greater superstar or somebody that's on the brink of being legendary become legendary. And I think these two matches are the most important matches every year except obviously the Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble is still, you know, to me, the most important match every year, but um, that, shape, that shapes WrestleMania. Uh, the, la the latter matches shape what's going to happen from July until possibly, you know, the day after WrestleMania, because that's, you know, Dolph Ziggler did it right. Dolph Ziggler, you know, there's, a, there's always a lot of buzz the day after WrestleMania, and Dolph Ziggler winning the world heavyweight title the day after wrestlemania 29 was genius so um that's about it for me on my uh, money in the bank ladder match thoughts uh you know me and my rants i could go on all night talk about you know a hundred different reasons why you know 14 superstars deserve a briefcase but uh that's kind of where my head's at with these two ladder matches Again, I'll go on record and picking either, you know, Daniel Bryan or Rob Van Dam for the WWE title uh, briefcase. And then for the World Heavyweight title briefcase, I will either go with Wade Barrett or Dean Ambrose. So uh, let me know who you guys are thinking. I want to hear your thoughts. Um, again, tune in July 14th for... Uh, WWE Money in the Bank, uh, it's already shaping up to be a really, really good pay-per-view. And uh, let's see who holds on to those briefcases. Uh, this is Hollywood Joe again from Hollywood's World of Sports, your source for all things sports. And remember, controversy doesn't come without criticism.